Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the GPU Z utility from Tech Power Up. This is a free utility that's very useful for finding out all the gory details about your GPU. Now, the first thing you need to do is find the website and find the link to download this. And I've got it up here, and it also the link will be in the description. And once you go there, there's a download button. And that will take you to selecting the server for the download. And I usually just pick one of the U.S. servers since I'm in the United States. And that'll come down quite quickly. It's a pretty small program. The next step is to find the file where you downloaded it. By default, it should be in your Downloads folder in Windows 10. So here it is on my system. And I'm just going to drag it from there to my desktop. And you don't have to unzip anything or install anything. So I'll go ahead and just move it there and then reposition it. And then you can just double click on it and it'll start up. And it takes a few seconds and you'll get a warning the very first time that you run it like this. And then it's gonna come up in a few seconds and show you information about your GPU. And it actually came up on a different monitor, so here's what it looks like. Here's what GPU-Z looks like. You'll notice that it looks very similar to CPU-Z, and that's probably by design. It's very common to use both of these programs together, and they have a very similar look and feel. I'm going to go ahead and move CPU-Z out of the way for now, and we're going to concentrate on GPU-Z. So you'll notice we have four separate tabs here, graphics card, sensors, advanced, and validation. We also have a little icon here that lets you take a screenshot of GPU-Z, and we have a refresh button that lets you refresh the information that GPU-Z sees. And then this is the settings button. So let's go there first. If we go to the settings button, you can change a few things about how GPU-Z loads up. So if you want to, you can set it to load every time you start up Windows, for example. You can also have which tab that you want to be active when it starts up. And by default, it starts off on the card info tab. You can have it check for updates automatically, and you can also launch an installer to install GPU-Z. I never do that personally, I just run the executable. And then you have a sensors tab under settings, and you can change a few things here, to, including what sensors you want it to collect information on, and how often it refreshes, and whether it uses Fahrenheit or not, and whether you want to use current, lowest, highest, or average for the sensor display. So I'm just going to leave it at the defaults for right now. So you've got a bunch of text boxes here with information about your graphics card. And many of them have tool tips associated with them, which explain what they mean in a little bit more detail. But the more interesting things off of the top is the name of the video card. So as it says here, this may not be reliable. It's set in the graphics card driver. But it identifies in this case that I got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super. And then right here is the sub vendor. So that's the actual board vendor, the add-in board vendor that manufactured this. So this is an EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Super. And if you want to actually know more about what card you have, it has this handy lookup button. And when you press that, it's going to go to a website, a page, I should say, on Tech Power Up that identifies your exact video card in most cases, as long as they have an identification for that card. So this gives you a photograph of what the card looks like, and it gives you lots of details about the card. So this is pretty interesting if you're unclear what card is in your machine and you don't want to open it up to find out. So we'll go ahead and, and bail out of that for now. Other things that are interesting are things like how much memory, how much VRAM you have in your video card, and what kind of memory you have, whether it's GDDR5 or GDDR6, for example. And then down here, it tells you things about your GPU clock speed and your default speed and your memory speeds and your boost speeds. This tells you what version of the driver you have. I have the latest and greatest right now. And it tells you the digital signature right here. And if you had more than one video card in your system, this drop down will let you switch between them. Or if you had integrated graphics and a discrete video card, you could switch back and forth between the two and see what was happening there. 
The next thing you can do with this utility, which I didn't actually realize until fairly recently, is this little question mark icon is actually a button. And if you press it, it's going to let you launch a, a little rendering test that puts a load on your GPU. And if you start the rendering test, here it is rendering in a small window, and you'll see that sometimes some of the specifications actually change. The memory speed or the core speed of the GPU might change. And if you pull up Windows Task Manager, you can see that the GPU is working fairly hard now with that rendering test going. And also the temperature is starting to climb on the GPU because it's working quite hard with a 3D renderer running that rendering test. And you can leave this running as long as you would like to sort of put a small stress test on your GPU. But I'm going to go ahead and stop it for now. And then you can switch to the sensors tab. And the sensors tab is actually very interesting. And that's one of the screens that I use the most in this program. And what it's useful for is it tells you things like the clock speed of your GPU itself and of the memory. It tells you the GPU temperature, which is very interesting. And it tells you different parts of the GPU, how hot they're running. It tells you the fan speed. So if you've got two or three fans, it'll show up here. How much memory is being used, how much video memory is being used. And then it tells you how much wattage that the GPU is using. So you can see the total board power draw right there. And then you can see how much pulling from the PCIe slot and how much it's pulling from the PCIe power cables that you have to plug into most high-end video cards. And this video card has a six pin PCIe cord and an eight pin. And it shows you what, how much is coming from each one of those. Also, it tells you your CPU temperature. So if you're doing something like running folding at home like I like to do, this will show you really quickly how hot is your CPU getting and how hot is your GPU getting as you're running it. And if we go back to the graphics card screen for just a second and kick off that rendering test one more time, and then while that's running, we can switch back to sensors and we'll move this out of the way. And so you can see the temperature is starting to go up on the GPU. And if we leave this running for a while, this should start to climb a little bit higher over time. Of course, if you've got a well-ventilated case and you've got good fans on your GPU, hopefully it won't go up too high. But this is sort of a quick and dirty way of seeing how effective the cooling system is on your system. A couple of other things that I want to point out. This is my gaming rig right here, and it's got an RTX 3070 GPU in it. And if you look closely, you'll see that resizable bar is enabled. You can see that with newer versions of GPU-Z. And there's a few hoops you've got to jump through to get that enabled. That helps performance on some games. Another thing I want to point out here is, all right, so notice on bus interface where it says PCIe 16 4.0, and it says that it supports PCI Express 4.0 with 16 lanes, but it's only running with PCI Express 1.1. And that's because the power saving is, is enabled on the GPU since it's not doing any work. So if you start the rendering test, increase the power usage, and then it will actually run at PCI Express 16 by 4. And that'll happen naturally in a game or if you're doing heavy GPU work by itself. Another handy feature is the ability to log all the sensor readings to a text file. So if you click on this checkbox right here. It lets you set the location and name of that text file. We'll just use the default and have it on the desktop. And then every second, by default, it records the sensor information to that text file. And you can go ahead and turn it off by unchecking that. And then you can open it up and take a look at what it shows you. And it collects all the sensor readings unless you go in to the settings and customize it. So that's pretty handy to have that ability. You can look at what's going on when you're stressing your GPU to see how hot it ever gets, for example. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMB LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out.
Really? <coughs> you have a lot to say. <laughs>